I, I don't know. I, I don't really have, like, an intro joke for this. Uh, I recently watched Poor Things. This is the newest movie from Yorgos Lanthimos, a pretty out there and quirky director without with the lack of the lack of a better de description. This movie follows Bella Baxter, a young woman who's brought back to life by an un unorthodox scientist. Uh, she runs away and basically travels the world and learns who she is. Even in the way I talk about the plot and what this movie's about, you can see the Frankenstein parallels here. This is actually based on a book of the same name by the late author Alistair Gray. In terms of uh, Yorgos's other movies, I've only seen his English language movies. I gotta watch Dogtooth at some point. But it, out of them, I out of those other movies, I prefer uh, The Killing of a Sacred Deer the most. It's the story that hooked me the most. And I, I will say that I, I think this is his best movie. I don't, I don't even think it's that close. The acting in this across the board is pretty stellar as well. Uh, I feel like talking about Emma Stone in this movie is has already been done because if you know this movie, if you've been keeping up with this movie, who knows, you might have even seen it at this point if it's out in your area, but you, you, you know how good she is in this. You, like, you know, this is a career best for her in, in like a pretty damn good career. Watching this while the curse has been running has been a really interesting experience and is an incredible like one-two knockout punch for Emma Stone in my opinion. I think Mark Ruffalo is hysterical as a lawyer that uh, Bella runs off with to explore the world. Uh, Willem Dafoe plays the doctor that brings Bella back to life and also we have like pretty much little appearances from uh, Christopher Abbott and J Gerard Carmichael who are both good in the movie but I also wanted to give a shout out to Rami Youssef, who I knew, I know he's a comedian. I hadn't really seen him in anything before this, but I really love him in this. Very much more of a quieter performance when you're looking at other performances from like Emma Stone, from the core performances of Emma Stone, Mark Ruffalo, and Willem Dafoe. And seeing him like go toe to toe with pretty much all of them and hold his own uh, has is pretty incredible. The world itself that's crafted for this movie when it, especially when it comes to like everything visual the production design the like even like, well everything i'm kind of at a loss for words for it uh it's unlike any movie i have ever seen i feel like some other people have said that but i they're, they're not kidding <laughs> this is some of the craziest stuff it's like a blend of a, fa a fantasy world but also with victorian era like fashion and also like mentalities and that's a huge part of this movie this also is a comedy and it's very funny in my opinion some of the funniest performances of the year and are in this especially ruffalo's performance but like the comedy this is a movie that you're either gonna really be into this or really not be into it because there's like this movie is on a very specific wavelength it's even for like yorgos lanthimos movies uh there have been some of his where like it has been like the name the most accessible movie of his which i i don't think i believe that i think this is in my opinion i think this is one of his weirdest movies that he's made there's also been a lot of headlines about uh the use of sex in this movie and of course there was the, a couple months ago there was that one study that uh gen z uh moviegoers don't really want a lot of sex in this movie in movies that aren't that isn't pointless and I am a part of that generation, and I'm, I, I get where they're coming from, but all this has a purpose. <laughs> there is, and there is a lot of it. So if you're one of those people that don't like sex in movies, uh, sorry. If you've seen the movie, it's pretty obvious to see why so many people are making the discussion of this being a feminist like argument and talking about it from that. And I agree with that. I think that does a, a good job. But there's also a different aspect to this that I've seen a couple people talk about, like online, mainly on Letterboxd. But I feel like I have to mention it because it did click in my mind a little bit too. I don't know if this was intentional on Lanthimos' part, but I also, as someone who has lived with an autism diagnosis for my entire life, I saw a lot of that in 
Bella Baxter and specifically Emma Stone's performance. Bella Baxter's uh, chase of enlightenment and knowing how the world works and like making sure to learn everything that is going on in the world, it felt very familiar to me. And dealing with all these new things and emotions and like processing everything, uh, it, 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 again, it, it hit home to me on how, like when I was growing up, I was learning all of this stuff. And like making, like I guess like making sure what to do and what not to do and being compartmentalized is, is it like and at least in that aspect that that really hit home for me and that had a lot to do with, uh, Emma Stone's performance and it it really re it, oh my god it once I realized that this was this kind of performance and just realizing how much it hit for me, like it 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 it, it had to stand that I think this is like the best performance of the year in terms of just like how how accurate it felt especially like growing up and doing like weird stuff when you're a toddler and like wandering around and like saying like weird things it it felt very oddly real and that is the close and emma stone has gotten the closest i've ever seen to that so yeah i guess with that being said i think poor things is not only like the best movie of this last 12 months that this is being recorded in 2024 uh, I think this is one of the best movies of the decade so far. Uh, everything is firing on all cylinders, and I think th these are career highs from Emma Stone, Mark Ruffalo, Willem Dafoe, uh, Yorgos Lanthimos even, and even Rami Youssef, which re he really blew me away in this as well. There is so much to pull from this movie, and even just off of a first watch, there's so, there's so much to get out of this, even without spoiling it, because... There's just so much. I like. I, I I doubt that any movie along this line can be pulled off like this. Like, especially like a lot of the writing in here, especially especially with Bella Baxter. This is something that, uh, admittedly, even me as someone who wants to be a screenwriter, this is someone. This is something that people have tried to get their entire careers like and get down, but they just haven't gotten and. Yorgos Lanthimos and right and writer Tony McNamara got it. They they, they did it. Poor things. Uh, it's one of the easiest five stars I've ever had to give. Uh, I just think right right off the bat, it was that feeling of just seeing a movie and realizing that this is the best movie of the year and just taking it all in and just knowing it's it's an incredible feeling. I just realized I forgot to mention the score. Uh, Jerskin Fendrick's Your God, get that Oscar.